starting out. Sorry, we're already here. Denise? Yes. Oh, we're ready. Okay. I, I was just waiting. I, I usually there's an announcement that says we've started recording. That I think maybe that's my confusion. Yeah, for some reason it played, but I'll, okay. I'll... Um, and then let's start this, and I'm I'm ready. Tell me when to go. All right, go. Good evening, and welcome to our the Marin County Law Library's first Thursday program. Um, we are delighted this evening to be hosting a special guest um, from the county, um, and in just a moment we will introduce the program. For a brief moment, I'd like to bring you up to date on what is happening in the law library. Um, we are successfully open five days a week now. Um, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are full days, 9 to 6 p.m., on Fridays, we're open a part day, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our law librarian and his staff for bringing this program up to nearly the hours we were pre-COVID. This is an extraordinary time for us. We are so excited. Stephen Richards has brought on a full law library staff and is opening services that once again include lawyers in the library. May I suggest to anyone who's listening tonight or has or knows of anyone that may need assistance, the next program will be on August 25th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. You should know that registration is required, seating is limited, and early registration is recommended. If you have any questions about this, may I strongly encourage you to contact the law library, speak to Stephen Richards or one of his staff members, and be aware that registration will open for the next Lawyers in the Library on August 8th, and then it will close when either the program slots have been filled or on August 22nd at 6 p.m. Tonight, we're very delighted to have a special guest who comes to us to tell us about a pretty remarkable program that you may or may not have encountered. Um, we're lucky to have the Legal Self-Help Center's director, Abby Luca, join us tonight. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this program, which has actually been here for a number of years and very successfully assisted a large number of folks living in Marin. What is a legal help self-help center? Be aware that many years ago, as a result of the increasing number of self-represented litigants using the legal system, the leaders of the California court, under the direction of the Chief Justice, began to implement programs to establish legal self-help centers in every court throughout the state of California. If you're interested, pull up that title, Legal Self-Help Centers in California. You'll be amazed at the breadth that this program has grown to. Be aware that this program for self-represented litigants in Marin County is provided by Legal Self-Help Center and an acronym that we'll probably use more freely as time goes on, LSHC. But right now, be aware that Legal Self-Help Center is actually a division of Marin Superior Court. This program was established in 2003 and was conceived by the court working together with numerous legal providers and other community agencies. 
Over the course of those years, tens of thousands of Marin residents have received assistance with their legal matters. I would like to touch briefly on um, a document that was made available, and it was, um, at the time, a letter that described the services that had already occurred. In this case, bear with me just one moment, um, Roy Chernus, um, Chris Kane, and our very own board member, um, Christine Fowler, drafted a letter to the Board of Supervisors that talked about the incredible success that this department and program had made in just two years' time. They talked about the incredible number of people coming through the beginnings of the program that ultimately will be discussed in much greater detail by Abby tonight of assisting people from the moment they walk in looking for assistance. This is a program that many, many folks may or may not encounter, but if you're really interested to hear how fully developed this program has been statewide, take a look on our Facebook page. Stephen Richards posted a pretty wonderful um, video from the Judicial Council. The Judicial Council gave great detail and used as an example a local court, San Francisco, and gave a great description of how it works. I would heartily recommend as you learn more about this program, if you need it, if you know someone who needs it, steer them that way. I'd like to now introduce Abby, who's been very patient with me, and I told her I would try not to talk too much about um, her program because I know she has a lot to share. We're really lucky because Abby comes to us as someone who ex has experience with the Family Children's Law Center, Contra Costa Superior Court. She has an outstanding background working at a very, very amazing organization in San Francisco, the Tenderloin Housing Clinic. Before she came to us in this position, she served as the executive director of the Family and Children's Law Center. She's also served as the co-chair of the Family Law Section of the Marin County Bar Association. If I'm not mistaken, it was December or January of this year that Abby assumed this position. We are so delighted that she would make time for us tonight, and I now warmly welcome her and a little bit earlier, we congratulated her on taking the helm of this program just as it's about to enjoy its 20th anniversary. Please join me in welcoming Abby Luca Rosa. Thank you so Thank much you for so that. Much. Great. And I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Uh, give me a thumbs down if you cannot. And, you um, sound great. Perfect. Thank you so much. So um, I'm going to give some basic information about the self-help center and um, the um, family law facilitator position, which of those roles kind, kind of coincide with one another. So here is an outline of what we're going to cover this evening. We're going to talk about the basics, what services we provide, how we provide services, our hours of operation, and we'll leave time at the end for any questions people may have. So the basics, um, th this is going to be fairly acronym heavy, so I apologize in advance, but uh, we're going to, you know, we say LSHC, which is, stands for Legal Self-Help Center. And Marin has a legal self-help center that's located in room C44 on the court floor of the Civic Center. Um, we always tell people go right through the bay of the station, turn left, and then make another left by the hallway. If you have visited us, I encourage everyone to stop by and see. We A couple years ago, we have moved into a new facility that is amazing. We are outfitted with um, a few offices as well as self-help computers for people to sit down and utilize when they visit our office. The um, FLS stands for a family law facilitator. This is a, um, a entity that is underneath the family code and Marin. 
as a family law facilitator and an assistant family law facilitator. These individuals, um, including myself, are typically experts of family law and um, are, are quite well versed in the family code and different procedures. And then the other thing I'll maybe touch briefly on today is um, FCS, which stands for Family Court Services. Family Court Services is another branch of the court that provides reports and recommendations to the court for custody and visitation issues regarding children. So there are different services provided by family law facilitators and by the Legal Self-Help Center. It, it's under all one umbrella, but the differences in the services might be um, fairly unique depending on what program you're seeking. So family law facilitators and the family law facilitator program, um, the main thing is that we do not provide any legal advice or representation. We tend to provide forms, procedural information, and everything is free of charge. We are available to help both parties through questions about child support, spousal support, child's custody and visitation, establishment of parental responsibility for minor children, health insurance, and the availability of community resources to help families. So we explain the process. We help parties complete the forms to either seek custody, seek divorce, seek child support, and we also can assist with mediation between the parties that agree to participate. So a chunk of our week is spent trying to reach resolutions with parties, um, and that's one of my very favorite things to do um, is hopefully assist parties in reducing the conflict um, that oftentimes will trickle down to children. You may also see us in the courtrooms helping litigants. Um, one of our um, family law facilitators is often seen in Department of Child Support Court, helping litigants, um, explaining the process and providing services. Um, and I will often appear in the three family law judges law in motion calendars, um, explaining ten of the rulings, trying to reach agreements, as well as the self-represented litigant calendar for each of the three family law judges. And so if you see us any of those courtrooms, feel free to say hi. Then there is the services provided by the Legal Self-Help Center. The, it, it's very similar in that we can't provide legal advice or representation. We assist parties with forms, procedural information, free of charge. But we, this is a broader swath of types of law that we provide. It includes small claims, guardianship, harassment, restraining orders, landlord, tenant, name change, and enforcement of judgments. Um, like I said, we explain the process, we provide forms, we help complete the forms, advise how to file, how to serve, and things of that nature. Obviously, in post-COVID, the landlord-tenant issues have been quite numerous, and we've seen a significant amount of litigants with that. Additionally, um, we've also seen a large number of people seeking name and or gender changes in order to obtain real IDs recently. Um, and here is where our attorneys really shine and our staff really shine because not only are staff familiar with family law, but they are also familiar with many other areas of law. And so while many attorneys just maybe specialize in one or two areas, our self-help attorneys and family law facilitators are often um, well-versed in many different areas. So how we provide services, um, and just as a frame of reference, I pulled some numbers and I only pulled one quarter from earlier this year, but in one quarter we assisted over 880 customers. And so if you multiply that out over the course of the year, it's over 3,500 customers in, in one year. And we have a full-time staff of four and one part-time attorney as well. And so that's quite a large number for such a small staff. So as I mentioned previously, you may see us in court during the self-represented litigant calendar, um, the law in motion calendar, and the Department of Child Support Services calendar. We try to mediate between the parties, provide information, referral, and any assistance we can provide. Oftentimes, it's merely explaining to people what is happening and what's the next step. Um, a lot, this can be quite confusing to self-represented litigants, and we always try to provide as much information to really remove a lot of the barriers to access to justice. We also provide mediation for family law cases by appointment. 
Um, those are the only appointments we tend to provide, um, but it would both parties would need to agree in order to meet with one of our attorneys. We provide drop-in services during um, which are in person, um, and we provide those on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays where parties can come in, fill out an intake form, and sit down with one of our attorneys. Um, this can be quite busy. Um, we always ask people to get there before 10 a.m. in the morning, or I'm sorry, 11 a.m. in the morning to ensure they can be seen that morning. We provide brief information and referral by telephone. This is one of the things that may not necessarily get uh, quantified as much in those calculations of how many people we provide because we get dozens and dozens of phone calls every single day. And our staff is amazing at um, providing amazing customer service, answering questions, directing parties where they need to call, who they need to reach out to, or providing basic information and court updates as well about their case. We also provide assistance by email. Um, litigants can email the self-help at marinecourt.ca.gov email address and one of our staff members, either one of the attorneys or one of the support staff, will get back to people typically within 24 hours. This is amazing service for people when they're just seeking forms or just seeking some resources um, for assistance completing the forms or next steps as well. And then we also offer Zoom drop-in hours on Monday and Friday. This has been another development since the pandemic and has been really, really successful. It's a great place for litigants to start if they're just seeking some information um, that's preliminary. Um, we provide links for services. We provide forms. Um, we will also assist with completing the forms um, electronically and advising people how to file. These are our hours of operation. So as you can see, we provide remote services on Monday and Fridays, 8.30 to noon um, through our Zoom drop-in hour. Um, simultaneously, we provide assistance um, for brief assistance by phone or by email during those times as well. Monday, um, we also provide remote services by email and mediation by appointment, and those mediations typically take place on Zoom as well. Tuesday is often our busiest day, and we have our in-person hours in the morning, 8.30 to noon. It's first come, first serve. Simultaneously, we offer brief services, by email or telephone, and um, as well as in the afternoon until 3 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday looks very similar to Tuesday, and Friday we is this very similar to Monday, where we offer mediation, our Zoom, and our Zoom um, drop-in clinic. Uh, this is where we'll pause for any questions. Um, I've linked our website here. Um, our court has a wonderful um, website with lots of information, including links to the Judicial Council website, which their self-help website has been updated recently, especially in the divisions of landlord-tenant, divorce, and small claims, which we all know is very um, much self-represented litigants. And our website links to their website. Um, which is incredible. Our telephone number is 415-444-7130. We're located in C44. And please feel free to um, email us at selfhelp at marin.courts.ca.gov if anyone has any questions. That is the end of uh, my presentation, so I'll open it up to any questions. Um, yeah, so I have a question. Just, I guess it's like, how far do you help with filling out forms? Just because at a certain point, filling out a form becomes legal advice. And that's a problem we run into quite a lot in the law library. So I'm just wondering. Sure, it's a case by case basis. Um, obviously, you know, we can't give legal advice, um, but we also acknowledge that a lot of the forms are, are designed just to check a box. And so, Oftentimes, we like to give people their options and explain each options, but ultimately, it's their decision. So as an example, 
for something like on the dissolution petition, the FL100, when we are explaining when when it's their decision, a litigant's decision, what to mark as far as legal and physical custody. We explain legal custody is as follows and go through the definition of that, same with physical custody. And here you can either mark joint or sole um, and ultimately leave it up to them to answer it. And then we'll move on to the next step. The same thing with community property. We'll explain the definition of community property, but we won't go as far to say, hey, this is community property, this is separate. We leave that up to the litigant to decide um, based on the information provided. And then obviously we will, if we, see that something is overly complex or something that would be better suited to having um, an attorney that can provide legal advice, we will refer to um, the lawyer referral service or another agency in the county that provides that. So for a housing issue, we refer to Legal Aid of Marin, so long as it was a tenant. And if a family law issue, we refer to Family and Children's Law Center. Okay, thank you. Emily? Hi, um, I might have missed this earlier. I'm sorry, you might audio cut out for a little bit. Um, but how many uh, attorneys do you have on staff? And is all your staff attorneys? And are they volunteer or paid? What, what does your staff look like? Excellent question. So we have um, two full-time attorneys. And so that's why I'm one of them. So I'm the family law facilitator. We have an assistant family law facilitator. We also have a part-time staff attorney um, to review um, and process dissolution judgments. And then we have two support staff, so they're called um, CPS3s, the uh, court processing specialists, um, that will help with emails as well as um, help us answering the, the phones and providing brief assistance um, by phone and by email. And so everyone's full-time except one of the attorneys is part-time. And that's the entire staff of the uh, Self-Help Center. Okay, you get a lot done for small staff. It's impressive. Well, I can't take all the credit by any means. Um, our assistant family law facilitator, Mitchell, is a is a, a, a very efficient, incredibly skilled, very knowledgeable individual, and in that he does a lot of the um, in-person drop-in hours and Zoom hours as well. And the knowledge that he has is incredible. I, I have a lot to learn from him stepping into this role. And um, because... You know, I, I, I know quite a bit about family law and I know a little bit about a bunch of other different areas, but I'm quickly finding myself um, making sure I become much more knowledgeable because I, it, it's very different. As a practicing attorney, um, I could assume some fault if I was wrong, you know, if it was I was the one going in front of the judge. And so if I was incorrect about a, a statute or a case, the blame um, was on me. But when we're telling someone what a code section says on behalf of the court, it's imperative because they're self-represented that we are correct. So it's, um, I really enjoy um, and have enjoyed learning um, much di more different um, diverse code sections and, and well as making sure I speak very precisely when I'm speaking with litigants because they're going, they're ultimately it's going to be them in front of the judge and not me. Right. And does your funding come from the Superior Court budget? It does. Thank you. Abby, could I ask how many folks um, do not speak English as a primary language that come come to see your office? Uh, yes, if you give me one second, I'm just going to pull up um, a one quarterly report. Um, let's see. So let's look at that. So about, um, oh no, that's um, one second. Oh, I'm going to do it this way. Apologies, I didn't have that number ready, but I can easily get it. No worries. I'm... So about 70% of our customers are English speaking or have designated that English is their preferred language. And then so that would be about 30% of our, our customers prefer a different language. Thank you. 
and with the primary being Spanish as the preferred language. Um, if, if you were to look at pre-COVID numbers, and I know that, that your tenure is, is very recent, um, would you say that the most frequently requested areas of legal assistance has, has your impression been that it's changed from pre-COVID to post-COVID? What kind of issues that people are coming to you for? Um, I don't have those numbers pre-COVID. Um, I do know that the vast majority of the self-help centers see family law as a main issue. Um, and I don't believe that has changed. But I do see that um, the, the two other elements that we see um, the greatest are the landlord tenant issues and small claims. And, um, and the landlord tenant issues have become quite complex um, post COVID. I previously served as a civil facilitator in Contra Costa County helping with unlawful detainers. And um, that was 2018, 2019. And I can certainly attest that um, unlawful detainer was much, much easier pre-COVID, that there is a lot that even just the unlawful detainer complaint is significantly longer, um, much more complex. And we are um, making sure that we're trying to stay up to speed on all the rules and regulations regarding the housing law. That makes me curious how many landlord tenant issues might be spilling over into small claims court with issues about getting um, refunds on deposits, especially since I believe the amount is now up to, what, $10,000? Yeah, it is correct. That's correct. The small claims um, cap is $10,000. And um, I can certainly attest that's definitely some of the people coming in to collect on small claims or to do things like deposits. And um, as I said previously, we're incredibly fortunate that the Judicial Council has updated and really built out their self-help website because there is such a plethora of information um, that we can direct litigants to regarding um, all of the steps for each type of case and um, especially small claims, landlord, tenant, and family law, which again, those are the three main areas that we see the most. And, and the, the fourth is in oftentimes enforcement of judgments. Ah. Do you see many senior issues coming in, folks coming in of a, 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 with any particular issues in housing or, um, you know, post-COVID, you know, during COVID? Have you seen an uptick in the senior population? I don't know if there has been an uptick and we don't track age. Um, that's not one of the data points we collect, but um, I can I can say that we, we do get a, a, a fair, these, a decent amount of seniors, especially in, in the areas of divorce, um, that parties are coming in wanting to be divorced um, in their advanced age. In terms of um, domestic violence restraining orders, um, I'm actually looking at a, at, a, at, a, at a letter that was sent way back in 2005. Um, it was literally one of the top things that they referenced in terms of folks coming to um, the self-help center. Do domestic restraining orders still continue to be um, things that you help people with a lot? Uh, yes, we, and we're, Marin County is really fortunate in the sense that we have um, both Center for Domestic Peace, which provides a lot of the advocacy for um, victims of domestic violence, as well as the Family and Children Law Center, which provides representation for victims of domestic violence. Um, we do absolutely see, um, I don't have the numbers during the, pen, you know, during the pandemic. I, I can certainly attest why I was the executive director of the Family and Children's Law Center. We experienced quite a drastic uptick in domestic violence 
restraining orders. Um, as far as the court's development, I'm, I'm pleased to say that they have just adopted a new local rule, a family law local rule that mirrors the family code, which allows victims of domestic violence to appear, to continue to appear remotely um, by Zoom for their domestic violence restraining order hearing. And so that is um, something I think that really helps uh, victims meaningly, meaningfully participate in the court because it allows them to appear by Zoom and not face their abuser in person, at least for the family law domestic violence restraining order. Good. Um, in terms of in terms of referrals, um, tell us about who you developed relationships with that you can readily refer people with continuing issues um, that can't be dealt with at your level. What are some of the agencies here in the county or in the state that you routinely refer people to? So um, because the court does not give any preference to any specific attorneys, um, we always refer, if it's a general matter, we refer to the lawyer referral service. So that's a that's run through the San Francisco Bar Association of so San Francisco, as well as Marin County. If it is a family law matter, um, we will refer to the Family and Children's Law Center. And then if it is a matter that is handled through um, Marin County Legal Aid, we will refer to them. Those are the um, agencies that we do have relationships with um, because they are county-based agencies. If, if if there is an agency that is um, for a litigant that is outside of county, we will often do a Google search or we will try to locate an agency oftentimes through a different county's court's um, website. A lot of the agencies are linked there. Um, Marin County Superior Court actually has a family law resource page on our website that provides information regarding local organizations, as well as um, mental health services and things like that. The other agency I wanted to reference is St. Francis Memorial Hospital, which operates the um, Rally Supervised Visitation Program um, that is run through the county um, on the weekends. I'm happy to link if um, I'm happy to link the um, court family law um, resource, family court services community resource link. I can put that in the chat. Um, I do believe that's helpful. Um, it was updated not too long ago in August 2020, and we do try to keep that as updated as possible with the various community organizations and the services that they provide. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Making sure I'm putting the right document. So I've gone ahead and put that in the link um, as well. We also have connections with various other um, family law facilitators all over the state. And so we will often reach out if a, if a customer comes in needing services in another county, we will contact them if there is um, to see if there's any other organizations in that area that can provide assistance to that program. Unfortunately, though, a lot of other counties don't have uh, low cost family law assistance, um, and that's oftentimes what we uh, customers are needing. Um, Marin is fortunate that we do have those services um, with the Family and Children's Law Center, but most other counties do not. What goals do you see in the next couple of years? What what other things would you imagine that you folks will be working on or areas that you'd like to further develop? So I, I joined the court at a really exciting time. I joined right after e-delivery was implemented. Um, also, as we update our case management system, as well as we are imaging um, all of our case files 
and have access to case files electronically. So all of our goals are, at least um, that I have, are related to moving the court and moving litigants into being able to access technology more meaningfully. So it would be assisting litigants and customers with e-delivery. Um, also, as we move into e-filing, um, having customers be able to do that from the comfort of their home. Um, we are also, you know, eventually down the line, but hopefully to be offering parties the ability to view things electronically, you know, from their case file and things like that. So it really is an exciting time at the court um, to have all these new developments. Um, and I, I know that customers are really gonna think the same thing. Earlier, you made reference to the number of folks that you see. Um, I'd like to once more draw attention to a letter um, that the Legal Self-Help Center sent to the Board of Supervisors back in August of 2005. Um, there's a remarkable statement here, and it goes so much when you asked us to envision the folks and the, the sheer numbers of the folks that you were you're seeing. They reference directly, in the first year of operations, the Legal Self-Help Center planned to serve approximately 800 individuals. In the past 12 months, however, the staff at the Legal Self-Help Center has directly worked with 6,536 individuals and has responded to inquiries from over 4,000 additional contacts via the telephone and individuals dropping in by the front counter with questions. That's extraordinary. That would have been back in a calendar time, 2004, 2005. What you described is something that has grown even more greatly and is offering an a incredible array of services. Um, I can imagine and I, I you know that where you're situated directly in the courts um, has got to be a great help and assistance to anybody that gets a referral there. If you've been summoned to court, if you have a court case that is being heard, to know that assistance is as close as it is to where you're located. That was really Oh, oh I'm sorry, Denise. Uh, so that was really critical, and that was a benefit. I don't know if anyone visited the self-help center um, before the move, but we were very down at the end of the long hallway of, of the court. And um, now, like I said, we're right past security, um, which is super convenient for a lot of people. Um, and it is, it's extremely helpful for litigants and parties to be able to come in get help with their forms, we make the copies um, and we send them up and we put it together. It's all ready to file that they can take it upstairs and file it um, in room 113. And oftentimes um, they will come back downstairs to us and we will, someone will, a staff member will sit down with them and explain service. We will put together a service packet. Um, we will provide a proof of service to them. Uh, we will go over service options and let the customer select how they want to have them served, um, which is really, really helpful to ensure that they're completing the next step properly. And then in the instance of a divorce, if we feel that they have the capacity and the bandwidth to take on another step, we will also provide them with their disclosure paperwork and things of that nature in the hope that the next time that they come back, um, into the self-help center that they will be ready to complete the next step of the divorce and, and keep moving along um, down that process. And so not only do we want to make sure customers are successful with what they came in to accomplish that day, but we also want to make sure that they understand and um, have the knowledge to be successful in the next step of their case. I... I Every time I have been in the court 
and seeing what a pivotal point you're located at, I marvel at that. And I, I think we're extremely lucky to have you, first off, where you are and that you are there to be so responsive and on such short notice to people in need. I really want to commend, I don't know if any of you had the pleasure of meeting the previous family law facilitator, Ali Kwong. She was with the court for many years and really built the program into what it is today. Um, I do want to absolutely give her credit because a lot of the amazing programs that we have um, is because she was able to create these programs and our emphasis on customer service, um, that is at our foundation, um, is really um, because of the policies and procedures and just heart that she put into the program and the self-help center. Ali Kwam is a former board member of the law library, and she was instrumental in the formation of our lawyers in the library um, program. So I think we all all have a real sense of gratitude for having had an opportunity to work with her and see the kind of programs that she had a vision to help initiate. And I am thoroughly convinced that you were a great successor. And we're very lucky to have the quality of people who work in this position um, be there. Well, I definitely think um, my path in life is, is again, at, at the heart of me, I do feel very strongly that as many obstacles that we can remove and as many boundaries that we can pull down um, to self-represented litigants accessing the courts in a meaningful way, um, in a positive way, is the better. People oftentimes come to court at the, the worst times of life. It maybe a family member's passed away. Maybe they're getting divorced. Maybe they're being sued. Maybe they're having to sue somebody. Maybe they're needing to get a restraining order. And if we can treat them with respect and courtesy and patience, even if they are not necessarily acting their best or or putting their best self forward, um, then they can leave in a, in a positive with a positive light on the court, I think that's really important. And again, that was something that Ali felt very strongly about and that I felt very strongly about as well. Stephen, do we have any other questions from the audience tonight? Um, not that I see at this time. I would very much like to thank you for joining us tonight. I hope again in the future we'll have an opportunity um, to have you back and to tell us about the things that you're doing. Um, and I would strongly encourage us, um, and, and I, I hope you have an opportunity to spend some time getting to know our law librarian. and. Let's make sure that we have information that may be pertinent, even if it's just the hours and directions up the hill to where you're at. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I, I want to thank everyone as well in the law, uh, the law library for bringing back the lawyers in the library. I know that was greatly missed um, during the pandemic, and I'm so happy to see that back. And um, litigants and customers are so excited whenever we're able to tell them that that, especially that it, when it's coming up, and um, we also help them try to sign up for that as well. So very much appreciated. Oh, thank you. We're grateful to have this program. We're grateful to have the very responsive members of our community, um, just like tonight, who willingly give of their time. Um, while this is a recorded program, I would let you know that folks very generously give of their time after working a full day. So I'd like to conclude tonight by wishing our guest and our law librarian the best of evenings and thank them for the great service that they provide to all of us. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.